Hello everyone, this is your host, your friend, your boy, Jet Black, the one and only, here with another exciting video. And in this video, I'm going to be playing some AI Dungeon 2. Some AI Dungeon 2. This is another episode of Jet Starlight and Xena Fairy Monster Hunters. This is another episode of the non-canon side story that takes place after the events of episode number 39 in the canon series. This takes place in a parallel universe, an alternate timeline, another dimension outside of the main series, where Jet Starlight is fighting off against characters that either the fans come up with or that the fans enjoy from other series. So in other words, this non-canon side story filler arc is full of tons of battles requested by you, the fans. If you guys would like to submit a character for Jet Starlight to face off against, definitely make sure that you do so in the comment section below and on our Discord. Um, I do have a few things that I ask if you want to submit a character. Make sure that you include your character's name their powers, their weaknesses, a description of their appearance, and their reason for why they want to kill Jet Starlight. Um, if you don't know of a good reason for why someone would want to kill Jet Starlight, you can always just make them a member of the Dark Star Squadron, which is an organization that hates false gods. Um, essentially, they hate beings that were made into gods rather than being born gods. And they hate beings who have the ability to resurrect because they feel like they're cheating reality because they feel like everyone only gets one life and that no person deserves to live more than once. Uh, so that's a really easy motivation for you to give your character. Um, another way that you can very easily create a character um, that would want to kill Jet Starlight would be to have the character be a sympathizer of the Evil Realm War because Jet Starlight is trying to stop the Evil Realm War um, so if you have someone who's like, the denizens of the evil realm belong on Earth, and you shouldn't kick them off the planet, because that is what Jet Starlight's trying to do. He's trying to send everyone from the evil realm back to the evil realm. Um, if you have a character who, like, doesn't want that, that would be another motivator for why they want to kill Jet Starlight. Uh, Jet Starlight is also the king of monsters, so you could have your character want to become the new king of monsters, or you may have a character who wants to have the monsters not be ruled over. So they could be like, mm -mm -mm, I'm going to like knock you out of your title so that no one's the king of monsters or because I want to be the king of monsters. There are a lot of different reasons for why someone would want to kill Jet Starlight. Uh, so feel free to let your imagination go wild. Those are just a few different ideas. Also, when it comes to powers for your characters, definitely make sure that your character is powerful enough to be able to actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jet Starlight. Jet Starlight is a god, um, and normally he uses a lot of element-based abilities. So a lot of times he does a lot of element manipulation. So keep that in mind when trying to create a character who will fight against Jet Starlight, because there's a lot that you can do when manipulating the elements. Uh, Jet Starlight, at his best, can like do reality manipulation, but normally he doesn't like to use stuff like that in a battle. Um, he also can summon portals and things of that nature, and he can regenerate. So again, keep all that in mind when trying to create a character to fight just Starlight. Because if your character just like shoots acid or something, that's probably not going to be enough to beat Jet Starlight. Um, but I love it when you guys submit characters, especially when you guys take the time to create your own original characters for Jet Starlight to fight. That's what helps keep this series going. So please make sure you do so in the comment section below and on our Discord. And if you guys have any questions about how to submit characters, feel free to post your questions in the comment section below and on our Discord. Without further ado, let's hop right in. So last episode, Jet Starlight faced off against Ina, who was actually um, a princess of the evil realm, who wanted to stop Jet Starlight from putting a stop to the evil realm war. Ina also was a member of the Dark Star Squadron, and of course wanted to kill Jet Starlight for those reasons as well. But Ina went out of her way to try and manipulate Jet Starlight into becoming her ally, and when that didn't work, the two had an epic battle that ended with Ina's death. Jet Starlight is now trying to leave from the Council of Elders, or at least from the Hall of the Council of Elders, to go back to Earth so that he can stop the Evil Realm War by sending all the denizens of the Evil Realm from Earth back to the Evil Realm. But before he can go, another member of the Dark Star Squadron has arrived, and his name is Gort. Uh, so real quick what I'm going to do is I'm going to read 
the last action from the previous episode. I'm also going to read a blurb of text that I've created to transition us from the last episode to this new episode. And I'm going to read over Gort's world info entry. Once I've done all of that, I'm going to start this 30 minute timer that you see here. Um, and then I'm going to try and see if I can defeat Gort in 30 minutes or less while playing as Jet Starlight. So without further ado, let's read the last action from the previous episode. You think that now is your chance to finish off Ina. You attempt to fire a massive blast of void ice frost to knock Ina back into the open portal before it closes. Your goal is to trap Ina inside of the black hole in order to end the fight. You yell, from the cold darkness of space, the power of the void and ripples of reality will become your tomb. Icy black hole prison. Ina attempts to escape from the uh, Ina attempts to escape from the black hole, but she isn't fast enough. She's immediately pulled into the black hole. The black hole begins to retract in on itself as everything it has already consumed is crushed into infinitely small pieces. Ina is dead. You win. So that was the last action from the previous episode. Now I'm going to read a blurb of text that exists as a transition from the previous episode to this episode. You are Jet Starlight. You are a god, the king of monsters, and a monster hunter. Recently, you've been constantly fighting challengers who, for one reason or another, want you dead. You've killed every last challenger so far. You are outside of the Hall of the Council of Elders. You are trying to get back to Earth so that you can use portal magic to send the denizens of the Evil Realm back to the Evil Realm in order to end the Evil Realm War. Right as you're about to open a portal back to Earth, Gort suddenly appears. Gort is a large robot. Gort says, You have killed my allies. The Dark Star Squadron wants you dead, and I've come here to claim your head. You say, What gripes do you have with gods and those that resurrect? You're a machine. Gort says, I am much more. The blood that runs through my veins is the literal blood of a god. That is my artifact. That is the power that I will use to destroy you once and for all. You say, yeah, yeah, I've heard this all before. You get in a battle stance and prepare to face off against Gort. The AI then said, Gort fights like a space marine. He's incredibly strong, fast, and tough. He regenerates quickly. He has lots of powerful gadgets and weaponry built into his body. Despite being a machine, Gort is very intelligent. Now, um, it mentioned in the text blurb, that Gort's artifact is the literal blood of God. That's another thing that you should know about the Dark Star Squadron, is that each member has some kind of mystical artifact that they use in battle. Um, but without further ado, let's check out Gort's world info entry so that you guys know a little bit more about Gort. Gort is a fan character created by one of our fans on the Discord. Shout out to King of Craxels for creating the character Gort. Gort is indestructible, extremely fast, waterproof, and he's a robot that runs on the blood of gods and has the ability to manifest any power he desires. He is a member of the Dark Star Squadron. He is not friendly. He is very angry and very disturbed. He has no desire to befriend anyone. He wants to kill Jet Starlight because that is the mission he was given by the Dark Star Squadron. His circuits cannot be overloaded. So King of Craxels didn't really follow the rules, uh, that being to include like a weakness, though I guess technically he did include a weakness. I'll explain. But first, I'm going to turn down the volume of my computer. I'm going to start the 30 minute timer. And now let's jump into action. Can I defeat Gort in 30 minutes or less? Let's find out. Hmm. You think that Gort might have once been a space marine or at the very least must have trained with a space marine you are impressed by gort's skill but you know that you can easily defeat him Gort mentioned that he runs on god blood, meaning that he derives his power from a divine source. 
you imagine that if Gort is drained of his god blood, that he will lose his powers and abilities. You know that Gort can quickly regenerate. So cutting him with void ice wouldn't necessarily be a viable way of getting Gort to bleed out. You imagine that the easiest way to remove blood from Gort's body is to simply command the blood to leave his body. You say, I can manipulate the elements. That means I can manipulate water. Water is inside of blood. Which means you attempt to command the water inside of Gort's blood to burst from his body. Oh, and let me change it from story to do. So yeah, that's my plan. So yeah. Wald King of Craxels did not give Gort an inherent weakness. By saying that he's powered by blood, I can essentially defeat Gort the same way that you would really defeat most other beings, by making all his blood leave his body. As his skin begins to turn a purple hue, you realize that you are in full control of Gort's body. You take advantage of this and have Gort aim his flamer directly at his face. You watch Gort burn himself alive, enjoying every moment of the experience. You know that having him burn himself is not enough. Gort can easily regenerate from any simple burns. You need to force his blood out of his body. You command the water inside of Gort's blood vessels to pop. Well, I guess to expand and explode. You hope that you can incapacitate Gort before he can use his intelligence and fighting ability to pose a threat to you. I guess to actually, like, kill you? Hmm. Maybe to get the upper hand is a good way to phrase it. Do ding ding ding. Do ding ding ding. Ding, 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 ding. Gort screams in agony as his blood vessels expand in an unnatural rate. You hear a series of pops followed by Gort's screams. You feel the water inside of Gort's body force itself outside of his body. However, the same amount of blood comes out. Cool. So I am just having him bleed out. You say... Blood is, yeah, I guess I'm going to say bleeding is most people's weakness. It is strange to watch a robot bleed to death. It seems like you trying to become more like a god in the end just made you more like a mortal. Hmm. 
You mentioned that you were sent to kill me by the Dark Star by the Dark Star Squadron. You never told me why you joined the Dark Star Squadron in the first place. Before you die, I'd like to know more about you. You seem interesting, to say the least. Okay, uh, let's get like a history lesson on Gort. Let's get his backstory while he bleeds to death. You are very happy to hear that Gort was sent to kill you. He couldn't have been sent to kill any one of the other members of the Dark Star Squadron. I'm not a member of the Dark Star Squadron. You are extremely happy to hear this. You also wonder why Gort joined the Dark Star Squadron. That's really weird. I don't know why the AI phrased it that way. Retry. You decide to try and talk to Gort as he bleeds out and burns. Gort struggles to talk, but the blood trickles down his chin. He attempts to move his arms, but realizes he is powerless to do so. I'm going to say... I control your blood. There's nothing you can do that I... That I don't allow you to do. That's weird to say. There's nothing you can do that I don't allow you to do. I feel like there may be too many negatives in that. You can only do what I allow you to do. Now, tell me your history before you die. Why did you join the Dark Star Squadron? Okay, let's learn more about him. Your boy Gort. I don't know. Oh, sorry. I don't know. Gort manages to say before he starts coughing up blood. What do you mean you don't know? You just said you were sent to kill me by the Dark Star Squadron, you demand. I was, but... I'm gonna say... But what? Why did you come to kill me? Well, not why did you come to kill me? Why did you join the Dark Star Squadron? Did you join just so that I could kill you? What was your motivation? Yeah, it's really interesting to have the robot who's described as being, like, intelligent be like, I don't know why I decided to join an organization. Because, because, Gort stutters as his life quickly flashes before his eyes. Because of what, you demand? Tell me why you joined the Dark Star Squadron. I don't have time to play games with a dying hunk of metal. That thinks it's a god. Hmm. Come on, Gort. Tell me what's up with you. I wanted... To be free, Gort says as his eyes shut closed for the last time. Gort is dead, and you feel a great sense of relief. You now understand that Gort was sentient, and you murdered him. Hmm. You think about Gort's last words. He was a machine 
that found life with the blood of a god and decided that he wanted to join a group that murders false gods, you wonder what was so different Yeah, like you wonder what really is the difference between you and Gort? You both were mortal. Well, I guess we weren't both mortals. You both were non-divine beings who then were transformed into gods. Gort said that he wanted to be free before he died. Maybe he went to the Dark Star Squadron because he thought that they would kill him, considering that his godly powers were unnaturally bestowed upon him. Hmm. It is fascinating to think that the Dark Star Squadron accepted him as one of their own. Yeah, I don't know. Like, the story of Gort does seem really fascinating. We're really similar characters. Um, but for some reason, he fought for the other team. You stare at the burning temple, and you wonder what the hell you are doing. The dead bodies of other apostles are still laying around. And you don't have any sort of plan for the situation. Well, there is no burning temple. That's like an interesting concept, I guess. Uh, retry. Gort had said that he didn't know why he joined the Dark Star Squadron. You think that perhaps you could find out. It seems as if Gort's memories were partially lost when he transformed into a cybernetic form. Hmm. Get rid of the, like, Gort's memories cybernetic form thing. Gort's a robot, not a cyborg. Though, I guess he's kind of a cyborg because he does have blood. Which is fascinating. The AI also said that he had skin. Uh, King of Craxel showed me a picture of Gort. Uh, he's not supposed to have skin, but he didn't include a description of Gort. And the picture was just kind of of a robot. Um, but the AI, in court, uh, the AI interpreted it as being an android, which makes sense. I mean, if you say a robot has blood, then it's not too hard to imagine that the robot has, like, skin. You know, um, hmm. I do think it could be possible for me to find out, like, why Gort joined the Dark Star Squadron. You sort, uh, you search the husk of Gort's body for a memory card. You're curious to see if you can use Gort's memory card to get a better idea of who Gort was and why Gort wanted to kill you. I could also potentially learn more about the Dark Star Squadron from looking at Gort's memory card as well. If they're going to keep hunting me, I might as well learn more about them. This is the last one you say out loud as you look at Gort's burnt and twisted body. You notice that Gort's face has melted off, but his glowing brain is visible. You rip out Gort's memory card from his now hollowed out head. This is the last one. I don't know why I would say that. So let me uh, just 
look at Gort's burnt and twisted body. Okay. So if I have Gort's memory card now, I would just need some way to, like, play his memories. Which I think I know of a way. You attempt to use your reality manipulation abilities to summon a handheld device that you could use to view the memories stored on Gort's memory card. Yeah, let's see if we can learn more about Gort. This is one of those like interesting things that you can do when you fight a robot specifically. Also, murder bots are like a cool concept, to be honest, for like an enemy for me to fight. You attempt to mold reality to your whims, but you are unable. Saren's devices block your abilities. You curse him for blocking your powers. The door behind you opens up. Zarin's devices. Zarin. Hmm. You sense in the dark tapestry that a being known as Zarin is interfering with your abilities using some form of device. Excuse me. The interference seems to only be affecting your ability to manipulate reality. You notice that the interference only occurred when you were trying to view Gort's memory card, you imagine that whoever is tampering with your abilities is doing so in order to prevent you from learning the secrets stored within Gort's memories. You imagine that Zarin is likely Gort's creator. That would explain how Zarin... Yeah, it would explain how Zarin would be able to create powerful devices that could potentially affect your powers. And it would explain why Zarin wouldn't want you to view Gort's memories. You say, Come out, Zarin. I imagine that you're Gort's creator. Show yourself. I want to learn more about you and your experiments. Okay. It did say that a door behind me opened up. Maybe Zarin's gonna come through that door. Zarin walks out of his office. Zarin is a thin, pale man who is about 5'6". His black hair is slicked back. He has a thin beard. Zarin wears a white jacket and a black tie. His lips are curled up in an unsettling smile. Hmm. I'm going to say, did you just exit the hall of the Council of Elders? Are you an elder god? So, this is like an interesting buildup. 
Let's see what's about to happen. Go AI. The title of Elder God did not exist when I was a member of the council. It's just Zarin. Founder Zarin. Creator Zarin. Or Madman Zarin by now. Zarin lifts up his hands in a shrug and walks over to you. Hmm. Why did you create Bort? And did you create him using your own blood? That actually would explain how Gort would possibly get the blood of a god in the first place. It also sounds like he's the founder of the Council of Elders. Of course I use my own blood. Who else is what I have used? Gort, JK, Galactic Corp. All of these are just names for one thing. Zarin circles around Clint's dead body and crouches down in front of you. Um, I'm going to change it from Clint's dead body to Gort's dead body. Hmm. I'm going to say, why did Gort join the Dark Star Squadron? The Dark Star Squadron hates false gods, and Gort, by definition, is a false god. He was a robot given godly blood and not a natural-born god. So this is actually, like, quite interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if I fought Zarin next. I'll have you know that I am a natural-born god. My father was a god, and my mother was a goddess. I am a demigod. Zarin stands up and starts shouting. Oh, oh, he shouted that. He went from crouching to saying, All have you know that I am a natural-born god. My father was a god and my mother was a goddess. I am a demigod. Which you wouldn't say. He would say, like, I am a pure breed. Like, it'd be something like that. Or just say, I am pure. Pure divinity. Yeah, he's given off some, like, Merge Zamasu vibes. I would say. So I'm going to say. It doesn't matter if you're a full god or not. Gort wasn't a full god. He was a machine. Why did Gort join the Dark Star Squadron? Considering the fact that the Dark Star Squadron hates false gods, and Gort is a false god. Hmm. Tell me more, Zarin. Tell me more. I made him so I can do whatever I want with him. Besides, the Dark Star Squadron worships me. They wouldn't have it any other way. Zarin begins to pace around you. Huh. That's actually kind of fascinating. So, the Dark Star Squadron has been killing false gods because you have been commanding them? I should have known an elder god was behind this. I've killed many of the Dark Star Squadron. Lives needlessly lost. 
and all due to your prejudice against those who you deem as unpure. Okay. This is about to be really interesting. So you created Gort to be an enforcer for your sick fan club. Why do you not want me to view Gort's memories? Yeah, so the Zarin situation is actually really interesting, I would say. He adds a lot more to, like, the whole story. Zarin's face... Oh, Zarin's faces stare at you as he tries to think of a response. I'm gonna get rid of the faces thing. I mean, he could have multiple faces. They went through like a whole description. He's like thin and he's pale and he has black hair and the slick back and he has a thin beard. And he wears a white jacket and a black tie and his lips are curled up in an unsettling smile. Just, just one face. I feel like you would have said, and he's got two heads, or like two faces. Zarin's face stares at you as he tries to think of a response. Hmm. What are you afraid of me seeing? In Gort's memories. Yeah, I'm just going to restate my question. I don't like Zarin, but Zarin is a curious fellow indeed. Zarin falls silent. We are not going to continue this line of questioning. Zarin's faces begin to frown, and it looks as if it is going to burst out in tears at any moment. Hmm. Interesting. You seem awfully sensitive. Awfully? Awfully. That doesn't sound right. You seem very sensitive when it comes to the contents of Gort's memory card. It seems like the card is valuable to you. I am tired of having to deal with your Dark Star Squadron. If you hmm, promise to stop using your power suppression devices on me, and tell the Dark Star Squadron to get off my back, then I won't look at whatever precious secrets you have on Gort's memory card. Do we have a deal? Okay, let me stop the timer. And let me see how this action turns out real quick. Zarin's face looks at you with a sullen expression. Okay. Zarin's face changes to a wide smile which reveals his sharp teeth. This deal sounds more than fair. Now spit out the memory card so that I may look at it. Hmm. Interesting. I guess it, what kind of fucks with me is that it's like a sullen expression and then like a wide, sharp tooth grin. Like your boy, like, did a full Jim Carrey on me. 
I'm I'm very curious to see where this like Zarin plot line is going. I really like it when the AI says this character's really important and it's gonna be like a big reveal about like something that you've been like encountering in the plot. Um so while the Gort fight was super short and I was able to pretty quickly like take down Gort because he had just a really obvious weakness. Uh, which is which is kind of sad. Like that's the thing that happens. Uh, I feel like even when someone tries to create a uber powerful enemy that Jet Starlight could like never defeat, normally your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. His god blood essentially allowed him to do anything, but it also ended up being the one thing that like led to his downfall. Um, but a Gort like walked, so Zarin could run. Because Zarin is quite the interesting character, and I definitely want to see uh, Zarin's crazy ass more in the future. Definitely let me know your thoughts on Zarin and Gort in the comment section below and on our Discord. Don't forget to submit your characters in the comment section below and on our Discord if you would like to see them face off against Jess Starlight. Also, if you'd like to see more super-powered AI Dungeon 2 battles, I have another series called Ultimate Volition that's all about super-powered battles and tournaments, and that is actually another series where you guys can uh, where you guys can submit your own characters to battle in one-on-one -on -one fights um, but the difference is that in that all characters only have three powers one for hitting one for blocking hits and one for getting the upper hand on an opponent um, and the winner of the tournament gets a wish any wish that they desire so make sure that if you submit a character for ultimate volition that you have your character's three powers offensive defensive and trump card and that your character has a motivation for wanting to fight in the tournament. Also make sure that you give me your character's name and their appearance. And you can submit all that information in the comment section below and on our Discord. Make sure you share this video and this channel with your friends. That way they can get in on the fun and submit their own characters and ideas for prompts for me to play on the channel. Speaking of which, you guys can submit your own prompts by sending me links to safe for work scenarios that you would like me to play from the AI Dungeon 2 website. Make sure that your scenario has a well-defined goal so that I can try to speed run it in 30 minutes or less. Thank you all once again for tuning in. This is your host, your friend, your boy, Jet Black One Only. Logging out. Peace. Chicken a bow. And don't forget to subscribe and join our Discord.